So welcome back to another video, uh, slash tutorial, slash that vlog. So on this video, I'm going to cover something real quick that I think is pretty powerful and I haven't saw as many tutorials out there regarding to this. So as you may saw in the previous videos that I was doing, I was kind of creating the UI for the inventory and the clothing system, etc. And as you saw as well in my second video, I was showing how to apply TDD. So I'm a bit concerning. I'm I'm a bit concerned about testing in general of my game. So I don't want to you know to create a feature and later on screw up everything else. So on this video, I'm gonna show you a pretty powerful tool that we already have it. So if you saw my previous videos, I think my previous two or three videos, I was working on the inventory uh, of this game. So I have my player, I can pick it up a couple items and depending if I have, and this is already programmed, like if I'm with the gamepad, this uh, interact interactable icon will change for some gamepad element. Uh, I'll show that in a different video how to do it. But uh, so I was working on this inventory over here. So on the clothing system, etc. So um, you may have saw that in the previous video as well. So, uh, so this is what I've been working on. And if you saw also in my second video, I'm a bit concerned as well regarding to testing these features as well. I don't want, since it's a small project and it's like, I don't know, it's only me and maybe a couple more people in the future working on it. Um, I don't want to have to everyone to stop, you know, creating and be creative to start testing features and et cetera. So I like to have, uh, I like to follow the TDD approach. So I usually create tests as I'm coding. So as part of the coding and then refactor, as I explained in my second video, but, uh, for this specific feature, which is the UI itself, it's kind of hard for me to test it because. I mean, it's a visual element and to test how things are disposed into the screen, it would probably need more of a screenshot or a snapshot testing. And I was looking uh, at the Unreal documentation and I actually found it that Unreal provides this for us, which is a snapshot testing. And I couldn't find as many tutorials out there on how to apply it. It's a pretty simple, but pretty powerful stuff to, to use it and requires, uh, I mean, no code whatsoever uh, regard, regarding like how to actually test it. The only thing that we need to be careful though is how to mock our UI or how to mock our elements into the, how to dispose that into the screen so it can be as realistic as, as possible as the final game will you know, provide that context for us. So I'm gonna show you how to create it. So if you open up the window uh, test automation, you see that you have this screen comparison over here. I'm going to delete it real quick so you, you guys can see it. So you have this screen comparison here. Yours are probably going to be empty. You're going to have your automation stuff as I presented in a second video. Uh, if you haven't saw that, just double check. Uh, probably it's going to be a card or a link below in the description. Uh, but I created as well those functional tests, which can be done in Blueprints as well, but also C++. And one of, of them regarding pickups is actually testing the inventory UI. And that's, a, that's a, actually a snapshot comparison test. So how I, how I can, act, can I actually do that or create it? First of all, you need to be connected to some sort of source control like GitLab, GitHub, or Perforce or anything of the source. So you need to go to source control, connect to source control, select whatever platform you're using. In my case, I'm using Git and accept settings and probably yours, yours is gonna show like what's your username, email, et cetera, et cetera. And you can just accept that. Or if you haven't set this, this up before, I mean, you can find tons of videos on the internet on how to set up source control for Unreal Engine. But uh, since I was already using, it's kind of already detected that I'm, I'm using. So it has like a, a Git folder inside of it. So it kind of grabs everything to me. So I can just accept settings. And once that's connected, there we go. I'm ready to actually use that. If you're not connected to source control, you probably are not going to be able to generate uh, ground truth images, which are is basically like you're going to need to run that test to capture a screenshot of something to test. And then you need to get validate that manually before, like at least once. And then you're going to generate like a screenshot and say, and say, okay, that screenshot is actually what I expect. 
and then you're going to store that through that feature as your ground truth. So whenever that test is running against again, it's going to compare with that previous image, uh, the snapshot, the new snapshot with the previous ground truth. And uh, if the comparison matches or if it matches, uh, but with a certain amount of percentage of deviation that you can also specify, um, it's going to either fail or pass your test. So first of all, connect to the source control. Second of it, you're gonna need to create a UI test. Uh, and to do that, you can just create like a blueprint. Doesn't need to be, you can do that in C++, but it, I mean, there's no code related to it. So it's it's easier to do than a blueprint. You can just create a new blueprint class and search for a screenshot. And you're gonna see that functional UI screenshot test or just a screenshot functional test. Regardless of each you capture, they're going to usually have at least the bare bones on what you need to do. So I created one of this, and let me just open up this one. And this is like a functional UI test. So if you open the class default, you can see that it's a functional UI screenshot test. Um, what that is actually doing is you can see there's no code in it. Uh, I actually create those two variables in here, but uh, I mean, uh, I'm not even using that right now so i'm going to show you the bare bones on how to set it up but uh basically got what you're going to do is you go to the class defaults and you're only going to need to take care of this screen here so you're going to need to select what widget that you that you want to you know pop it up into the screen in order for you to take the screenshot of it so in my case i select my wbp pause uh blueprint which is basically my overall inventory here, which has like all the buttons, the, pre the character previews and etc. And I also set it up like a, a task map for me so I can drop that in. So if I open up my dev test, test, I have this pickup task map as I explained before as well. And I drop that in. So as you can see, this is my inventory class. It has also a camera by default attached to it. And I, I, pointed out that camera to the ground because it has um, a gray color, like a more uniform color to compare with. If I point it out to the sky though, if I have those cloud is, as you can see, the clouds are moving and that's gonna generate deviation. So you want to test the screenshot since it's to test, to snapshot testing, since it's like a pretty flaky stuff, you wanna have as least variation as possible. And the only variation that you're gonna care are the bugs. So we don't want, don't want to care about the clouds and et cetera. So I pointed out to the basic and static information that I have, which is the ground. And as you can see, that's only going to do is, it's going to open up this blueprint. It's going to launch that, like, uh, it's going to create that widget and pull it into the screen for me. It's not going to be that way because I program in C++ to at least, uh, you know, fill up with five or six slots, like a, as I, if I would play manually here. Uh, so it was gonna have like five empty slots, but it, that's what I did. And again, as, as I said, you need to mock up your UI to be more similar to what you wanna look and test later on. Uh, I'm still gonna mock up later on, you know, to put some actual uh, thumbnails and et cetera in it, but that's not, a, that's not the point here. So what you're gonna need to do then, just create one of those drag and drop there and into actual UI, select the UI you wanna uh, test, uh, test. And under the screenshot options, you can set it up the resolution of that screenshot. If you don't set it up any resolution, what's gonna do is it's gonna go to the uh, edit, uh, editor preferences. And if you go to the automation section down there, you're gonna see that you're gonna have a resolution somewhere. Uh, let me see where that is. Oh, there we go. If you don't specify that resolution under the test, it's gonna grab whatever is set to default under your advanced automation. And that's pretty important because if you test that against a different monitor that has a different resolution, your tests are going to fail. Even though it's not a failing, it's comparing more pixels to the last pixel, so it, it's not gonna match. Screenshot comparisons are that way. So keep in mind that though when creating screenshot testing to always test into the same resolution or even taking screenshots in the proper resolution. So you can specify that down there. I didn't specify for the sake of this tutorial, but I mean, if I would testing against different machines, I probably would do it. Uh, the delay though, is how much time it, it's gonna be waiting for in order to capture the snapshot. So by default is 0.2 seconds. 
So what's going to do is going to open up the editor, pop it up the, the widget, wait for 0 0.2 seconds, take a screenshot and done. That's going to what's going to do. If you put like one second, maybe you have a UI that takes some, a while to actually populate or something like that. You're going to increase that. You would, would like to increase that delay. But again, it's up for your configuration. Uh, and there's a lot of other information, for example, disable noisy rendering, which it kind of disables the anti-aliasing, uh, anti-aliasing, motion blur, screen space, reflections, eye adaption, and some other um, effects that UE4 has it. So those can uh, contribute to a lot of noise in, into the final output of the screenshot. So it kind of disables those features and ignores them for the sake of these stats, which is making less as less flaky as possible. Uh, the same, I, the same, the same applies for this fixed exposure, which is that you know, a couple. You can always mouse over and see what it actually is it's disabling. But you know, uh, if you want to keep it less flaky, leave those on. Uh, if you want to check, you know, only your UI. I mean, it kind of doesn't matter what you have outside in the world. So it doesn't matter, like anti anti aliasing, uh, you know, eye adaptation, you know, tone mapping, etc. Uh, the tolerance, though, I'll leave a link in the description below describing the tolerance. But basically, if you set it up like zero, uh, the image needs to be exactly equal to actually pass the test. So it's like pixel by pixel, they need to be equal, which is usually never the, the, the case unless you have a pretty static and pretty controlled environment. Low, it's going to allow you like a certain percentage, like maybe I think it's 5% or something. I need to double check. Uh, you can set specify median with uh, the biggest. Uh, this says the biggest devi the deviation is going to be accepted to pass or fail the test. So you need to keep in mind. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can double check what actually are the percentages between low, median, high, and you can actually specify a custom percentage if you wanted to, like a custom tolerance for red, green, like RGB, and the max brightness, etc. So I'll leave that by default as low. Uh, the percentage of error that you can accept, like 10% uh, or 2% and et cetera, uh, I'm going to set to ignore analyzing because I'm checking the UI, so it doesn't matter for me. And ignore colors if you set it up that to true, as you said, it's only going to compare the limits of the scene, which is not what I'm testing right now. I'm trying to test the actual viewport. Uh, functional testing, you can enable that. You can actually take screenshots while functional testing. That's another thing. I'll leave a link in the description below about that. UE4 documentation regarding the snapshot testing, which is pretty cool. But uh, at least gives you, gives you a bare bones and what are those parameters and how to use it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not as, as easy to follow as well. But again, once you do that, it's pretty simple. Like it's pretty much done actually. So you just drag and drop your test into your level, into a test level. Uh, remember, as I mentioned, to save your test level with F tests in front of it, so it, it shows up like easier. It's easier to show up onto the session front end. So if you go to the session front end, at first it may not be there once you drag drop, but once you save it and reload your your engine, your engine like relaunch the whole thing, it's gonna hot, you, you know it's gonna uh, update hot reload. So it's gonna show up here under the functional test, like project functional tests, and you're gonna have this. BP inventory UI test. And once you run that one, what's going to do is, as you can see, pop it up, looking at the bottom, and it's done. The test is that way, that simple. And in my case, it passed because I already have a screenshot as a base to compare with, as you can see. So uh, if you don't have it, it's going to show up like add to ground truth here or add as an alternative. If you're not connected to the source uh, control, it's not going to show those. Uh, and only the add else alternative is only going to show if the percentage is too big, like if the deviation is like above the low percentage you set under the test. So as you can see, this is the incoming image, which is basically what I took like while running my test. And you can check like what's the difference between the ground truth and the incoming. You can see that the difference actually is uh, that the character is actually moving. So you probably want, I probably wanted to uh, isolate that and only tack, probably tackle screenshots of the elements of the 
inventory and then only the menu and etc. So I'll probably not gonna you know screenshot that because I mean it's already you know tested that that part of the code. So I'm not gonna care about the preview itself. But uh, you can see that the difference you can you know double check the difference between the images over here. And the difference is basically like those couple dots. And as you can see, it's mainly on the pre UI preview character. If you want to delete it, uh, that means you're not going to use that image for anything. If the percent is too big and actually fails, you can add that as an alternative. So in the next step, you're going to have like more than one image to compare, like a, a historical data. And if you want to see, oh, it fails, but this is the actual, uh, sorry, the incoming is the actual uh, right image. You can always replace that. Once that's done, you're going to replace that image into your, under your source control. So it's a pretty simple thing to do. All right. So yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. So let me create like a new UI test so you can double check like how that actually works. So let me just open up uh, the tests. I'm going to create a blueprint class of the type functional screenshot test. There we go. There we go. I'm going to create like, I don't know, uh, BP underscore uh, inventory test or something like that. I'm going to open up that one. I'm going to select my class as the inventory only this time. So, oops, my blueprint section of it. I'm going to leave as a viewport. I'm going to open up my screenshot section. I can set it up to this, this, like the tolerance, etc. I can set it up that the median or the zero tolerance or whatever. There we go. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to drag it up, drag and drop that test over here to my level. I'm going to scale that up. Dra uh, screw that, like rotate that camera to something that I know is static. For example, that floor over here. So it doesn't have too much noise like clouds moving etc to to compare with and once i open my session front end and i go to the automation now as you can see nothing is updated here but if i save my map close and reopen my project just close it and relaunch it so the hot reloads can actually be updated So while it's loading, so as you can see, if I open up the, again, the session front end, once it loads, let me just cancel this. And if I open my project, now I have six, like six items, five functional tests. And under the pickup, I have this inventory test. And if I hit play on it, it's going to open the inventory widget only to test. It's already closed. And it's saying like new screenshot for this test was discovered. Please add a ground truth version of it. So if I go to the session front end and do the screen comparison, I can see now that I have a new screenshot for that. And it's my inventory itself. It's not properly set up. I'm probably going to create like a, a different blueprint just to check this, this one up. But that is just, you know, for the sake of this tutorial. So if I see that and said, okay, that's the widget. That's the disposal that I wanted for the widget. All right. So I can just close it up, click and add new. And next time I run the test now, it's going to open up and now we pass this because it's really equal. So as you can see, there's no difference between those. I can replace it, delete it, but I mean, the test already passed, so I don't kind of care. I only would take a look at that screen comparison screen if my test either fail or provide some sort of alert. So yeah. That's a pretty simple thing to do. Snapshot testing is pretty easy to do under, under the world. The snapshot debugging as well is pretty simple to do. It's just not really, you know, welcome it out there. And yeah, hope you like it.